Hello, welcome back to Ride Rescue. In my prior video, I installed the front cross member and top hats for my independent front suspension. It's actually a Mustang II style independent front suspension. You can go back and watch that if you haven't seen it and get an idea of what all is involved in putting in this system. I need to install the adjustable coilover shocks to make sure that the, the springs clear all the frame and, and the hats and suspension as well as putting in the torsion bar. Now that I have these top hats tacked into place, I went ahead and mocked up most of the suspension so that I can test the travel. Make sure there's nothing binding, there's, they're not dragging on the frame rails. I've got my angle set right now at exactly 90 degrees from the floor. So now that I, I'm Comfortable with all of this looks really good. I want to put in the rack and Then I can test the travel to make sure that the, the steering components don't drag on the bottom of the frame And the same thing with the torsion bar So to mock up the power rack these bushings were already in place. I held this into place where the mounts are on the front stabilizer and that whole unit, the way it's set up, it needs a spacer to push this out because it's dragging right here. It's, it's bound up just enough that the bolts won't line up. The kit came with these with a polyurethane bushing and these are a rubber bushing and it has a spacer. So with this spacer that should stand off Give me the clearance that I need here. So now I've got to figure out how to get these pressed in <laughs> rubber bushings in. So I'll start with abusing some tools. Some of these aftermarket racks, well, depending on all the geometry and the lengths, well, you have to change the length of these bars. And since this one was set up for the width of the 40 Ford, it should be the exact correct length for my application. And so far, it's looking good. that's sticking out on the side of the steering rack is still in the way even with the, the spacer to push it out by, beyond what those bushings are. So there's two solutions. I can get more spacers or I can grind the side of that off. I don't really want to grind the side of that off. I want to get me some more clearance. And the rubber boots on the rack are rubbing on the lower control arm. So I don't want that either. We've got good travel, good clearance for the frame. So that all looks good. Now I want to put in a shock and make sure that the spring isn't rubbing on here. I have 
spring contact with the frame. So this flange that's sticking out, I was a little worried about that. I'm going to have to radius back that flange. I'll have to put all the components together for the shock and check that exactly how far back I need to cut this. But I'll just radius it all the way back to the edge of the frame and then I can weld that, that pinch piece together because it will cut out some of those spot welds. Beautiful piece. Definitely have to trim off part of that frame. You got good clearance up above it. One of the things I found out since I originally had made all my dimensions from this hole to that hole of these top hats, uh, I was finding the dimensions were supposed to be 35 to 36 inches. This one's considerably less. The reason why it's less, I found out, is the 34 to 40 Fords have a smaller control arm. The larger Fords, as you get into the mid 40s, late 40s, they're about an inch, two inches longer, depending on the, the wheel spacing and the track width. So for the bigger cars, these are bigger. So this is the right cap was a little concerned. So now I will put on the torsion bar and make sure all the clearances work for that. And of course there's no instructions. I'm definitely going to have to play around with the geometry of this sway bar. I don't like how low this is to the ground. And to put it up over the top does have a relief there that looks like it might be for the sway bar. I'll have to try it with the shock and everything in here, but yeah, that probably makes more sense to have it up above. I reversed the torsion bar, brought it up through. It fits nicely into that notch in the bottom, but it has very limited travel, so that can't be right. It looks really good at right height, but it, it hits pretty quickly. Back to the drawing board. I've tried the sway bar now both ways, on top and underneath. On top, it's just no way. Underneath, I'm getting good travel all the way up but I'm not getting full travel all the way down, binding up. So what it's doing is it's binding this all the way so that the bolt can't be bottomed out. I have to leave it loose. I don't want it loose, so I'm going to have to either grind away this material, which will weaken it, and I can't grind it away down here, or I'll have to put some kind of a spacer or washer that will work so that I can get it to travel a little bit more because of that extreme angle that it's on. Speaking of geometry, where this crack is hitting, if I add more shims in there, I don't like the extra geometry that's creating and lifting it up higher. All right, I have everything mocked up now. I put in the shock so that I could test the travel <laughs> these suspensions with these short 
control arms uh, because I have such a narrow track width. Uh, they don't have a lot of travel. Uh, the spring rate, I'm, I'm assuming, is, is fairly stout. <laughs> Because like I say, there's not a whole lot of travel for this to go up and down. But since I do have limited amount of travel up into the fender wells and how much I've lowered this, I don't want a whole lot of travel anyway. I do have a two inch drop spindle, so that has lowered my right height. And then the way the, all the geometry is on this, that lowered the, the right height about an inch. Uh, two inch drop spindle, so that's three inches, and that's about what I had once I get, I think this has about three, four inches of travel is all, it's not a whole lot. That would be pushing that tire up against the fender anyways. So that's another thing I need to check. Um, doesn't have any bump stops. There's nothing to, to prevent this from bottoming out, I would say spring probably bottoms out before the shock does but something to look at the hind joint I ended up bending it just slightly and that gave me the clearance I needed so that ended up being a fairly simple fix the rack and pinion that ended up being fairly simple too the brackets on this cross member that are welded on this one is oval. It's slotted so that the rack can be moved side to side. And I was looking at the rack and it's too far to the left. So I ended up centering it up and the bracket on, on the other side, on that side over there, you can't see it, um, just had a hole right in the center. So I ovaled that out as well. And then I was able to get the clearance I needed and I was able to get this rack dead center. On that cross member. So that's all that. I did grind off just a teeny bit of where that was hitting on the cross member, but I don't know if this is going to be enough clearance. I'll have to wait till I get the body on. Once I get the body on, then I can put in the steering column and then I can figure out all the geometry and the joints and everything that I need to, to hook this up. I may have to notch this frame, uh, this cross member. Well, we'll see, but it's fairly simple to just cut out a section there and put in a piece of pipe, weld it all in, or just kind of notch it, heat it up, and bend it back, and then re weld it. But not too big of a deal, disappointing that I have to, but it's what happens when you're doing a custom project. <laughs> so, for now, this is all finished. Uh, everything is just tack welded in. Now uh, before I get carried away doing a whole lot more, I'm going to pull all of this back out and then I want to set that engine and transmission down into this area and figure out what it is, all the geometry for that's going to be. <laughs> Where the motor mount placements and everything that I've got to figure out for that. Um, I have all the dimensions from the body before I pulled the body off. I have a really good idea of where that engine needs to set. Well, that's it for this video. Appreciate you watching. I really appreciate the support of my channel. So please subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment. Love hearing from you. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye for now.